Hey Astro Kids and welcome back. And this is your 2023 horoscope using Vedic astrology. Just a quick disclaimer here that this is going to be according to Vedic astrology, which is using the sidereal zodiac. So if you're not familiar with what your sidereal moon sign or ascendant sign is, make sure to check out my free calculator down below in the description so that you have the correct information. Also, this horoscope will be according to your moon sign or rising sign. So this is not according to your sun sign, as the rising sign and the moon sign are mapping out your life. In particular, the rising sign is mapping out the lessons and experiences that you are going through, where the moon is mapping out your life according to how you are perceiving it, how it is happening within your mind, how it is making you feel internally. So these are the most important points to read your chart from. If you want to go deeper to understand how your chart actually plays out for you, actually getting into the planets, how they're aspecting one another, different transits, how they're impacting your life, the dash periods that you're going through, all of these different factors, make sure to check out my brand new website where you can book an appointment with me. So stepping into 2023, we will see a lot of major changes happen. But in particular, as we are coming into January, we will see Saturn shifting its position. So we've been in this two and a half year cycle now of Saturn and Capricorn, but Saturn will be stepping into its Mulatricon sign of Aquarius. And this is a very powerful position. Throughout most of 2022, we're going to see Jupiter in the sign of Aries as well. And as we come towards the end of 2023, we're going to see Rahu shifting into Pisces and K2 shifting into Virgo. We'll see that on October 30th, so more towards the end of the year. But we're going to have some major changes as Jupiter comes into Aries here in April and as Saturn is coming into Aquarius at the beginning of the year. So this is a huge year that is all about moving ahead, all about making some major changes and decisions about having the confidence to go for what you want. We are going to see Saturn for the majority of this year in the Naksatra of Shadabisha. So Shadabisha is a Naksatra that is very mysterious, that is very much about science and mystery and exploration. It is a very intellectual Naksatra that likes to learn, that likes to delve into the mysteries. So this is a great time for anyone who is into research, anyone who is wanting to learn, wanting to get into their studies. And also this Jupiter in Aries is going to support this as well, because Jupiter will start off its transit in the Naksatra of Ashwini, and Ashwini is a very intelligent Naksatra as well. It is all about getting to the truth, as it is our first K2 Naksatra. So Ashwini is a Naksatra that is drawn to the mysteries, that is drawn to philosophy, that is all about learning, that is all about absorbing knowledge and information and understanding it at a deeper level. So this is a very academic Naksatra. And so Jupiter is going to do very well as it comes into Ashwini. As Jupiter is again about knowledge, about learning, about travel. Ashwini also is a Naksatra that is all about adventure as well. So it is also akin to traveling. And we're going to see traveling is a theme as well as Rahu comes into Pisces for some of you. As Pisces is about foreign travels, it is about isolation, spirituality, and so all sorts of long distance travel, whether that is foreign or whether that is happening on a deeper level as far as spiritual journeys and delving deeper. So this is a very interesting year that we are coming into with all of these different moving pieces here. 
K2 in Virgo is a bit of a tricky position as it can give us some perfectionistic tendencies wherever this is placed in your chart. K2, remember, is a planet that is all about letting go, that is all about surrender. But K2 also has a side to it that is very stubborn because K2 is very much about our belief systems, about our deeper truth. So it is very adamant about what it believes. Remember that K2, although it is about spirituality, it is a very fiery, smoky kind of energy. So there is an intensity to K2, a very transformative energy that is behind it. And so as K2 comes into Virgo, it is a very critical time. It is about perfection. It is about details. And we can see some difficulties related to health as well. There's a lot around health as we're seeing Jupiter coming into Ashwini, which is health related. We're also going to see Rahu and Ashwini as we come into this next year as well as we're finishing out this transit of Rahu and Aries. And then, of course, we have Saturn that's going to move into Shadabisha, which is also related to complicated illnesses and miracle healing. And so there is a lot that is centered around health, that is centered around healing, that is centered around natural medicines that can come up during this year as well. There can be a lot of war, and we are going to see Rahu coming into a conjunction with Jupiter as well. And so Rahu and Jupiter together is creating a very interesting yoga where we are going to see some explosive energies coming in here. Remember that Rahu is very obsessive. It blows everything up. And Jupiter is a very expansive planet. And we have it in this fiery sign of Aries. So this is going to be a very interesting energy that is all about risk taking, that is all about being daring, courageous, bold, going for what you want. But you want to be careful with that Rahu influence in there as Jupiter and Aries can give us a great deal of luck and success around our achievements as Aries is all about that willpower, that strength, that determination, that originality, that ability to pioneer and trendset. But Rahu is a planet that is very unstable, that can get us into some difficulties. So as Jupiter and Rahu come together, this is a great time to plan for what you want. But you also want to use some caution coming into this transit as well. For those of you with Sagittarius Moon or Sagittarius Ascendant, Saturn will be shifting into your third house in Aquarius. This is an excellent transit that can help you. Saturn has been sitting in your second house for some time now, which has been very difficult to get the resources or to get the results that you've been seeking. But as Saturn shifts ahead into the third house, this can support you in starting to move things along. Saturn loves being in these Upachaya houses like the third where there is improvement, growth, so this is an excellent time to strive towards your goals and to see those results, those outcomes start to come to life. This is a time where you may find that you are more practical, more pragmatic, more ingenious in your approach to getting things done. This is excellent for your self-improvement, for your ability to push forward and to see those results come to life. With Saturn here in this third house, this can also be a time where you are gaining more skills, gaining more knowledge that can help support you in those areas where you want to see some growth take place. This can be a time where you are getting some support from your siblings, from close friends and relatives. It can also be a time where you are leaned on for some support through your siblings, neighbors, cousins, those closest to you. And so this can also be a time where you're taking on more responsibility. But ultimately, again, Saturn in this position will help you. This also can be a time where this can help you again in your studies. So this can be a time where there can be challenges related to education. However, this is a time that will ultimately give you long-lasting results in your education. So for those of you who are interested in your studies, continuing being persistent along your courses will get you some solid results. 
This can be a time where some of you are returning back to education or you're taking up some kind of creative hobby, some kind of study that can help you again in moving forward in your goals and pursuits. This is also a time where your relationship with your children can become more serious, where you are putting more energy into this area. And this can help you with your relationship with your children as well. This is a time where this is all about philosophy, all about spirituality. Again, anything that you are seeking to learn, to explore, this Saturn in the third house can help you in this area. This is a time where you are starting to get more into religion, into foreign cultures, any kind of philosophical studies. There can be challenges with a teacher or guru, a mentor in your life, but also they can bring you some support that can help you at this time. This definitely is a time where you are feeling more independent, more driven, and so there can be some conflicts around those who are trying to give you advice or direction. However, again, this can help you by giving you the support that you need moving forward. There also can be some difficulties around any kind of foreign trips that you're taking, any kind of foreign connections business-wise. There can be some complications in that area. And this also, again, is a great time for any kind of spirituality, mystical studies, getting into the occult. All of this is coming to you at this time. Also, in April, we will see Jupiter shifting ahead into Aries. So Jupiter has been in the fourth house for you in Pisces for some time now. And this has been a very auspicious transit. And as Jupiter moves ahead into Aries, this is not a bad placement either. This is Jupiter, a benefic, coming into your fifth house, one of your trine houses. And Jupiter is a very beneficial planet for you as it is your chart ruler and the ruler of your fourth house of happiness and inner peace. So as Jupiter comes into this fifth house for you, this is definitely going to change your personality. This is going to make you much more adventurous, fun-loving. You are wanting to have fun, to be more free-spirited at this time. This can be a time where you are finding some luck and gambling and any kind of speculation. The odds are in your favor. But you do want to be careful to pay attention to how your chart is set up because there can be difficulties around sudden losses depending upon what planets are interacting with Jupiter in your chart. But ultimately, this is a time of good fortune, of positivity, of new opportunities coming into your life. This can help to broaden your horizons, to expand your social network, to help you in experiencing new opportunities, new trips, this can be a very adventurous time. This also can be a time where you are involving your children in adventures as well. So a big time to experience things family-wise or friendship-wise with different people going on different adventures and having new experiences. This can open up new opportunities to you as far as creative ideas and solutions that can increase your wealth and income at this time also. But Jupiter in this fifth house is really getting you into your studies, into your creativity, into improving upon yourself. And ultimately, Jupiter is going to aspect back onto your first house with this transit, which is going to help to expand your entire personality. So this is a major moment of transformation in terms of you yourself and your life direction expanding, broadening your potential, broadening your horizons for many of you. If you have a Sagittarius moon, however, Jupiter's aspect back onto the first house can make you a little bit more sensitive and tender at this time. So it is important that you are paying attention to what is making you happy, what's making you feel at peace if you are coming from the moon's position. We're also going to see at the end of October, Rahu will shift into the sign of Pisces. Now, Rahu has been in Aries for some time now, which has made you very courageous, very risk-taking, very bold and dynamic, where many of you have been taking up new opportunities, new pursuits with this Rahu position. But as Rahu moves back into Pisces, this can actually make you a bit more introverted, where you are becoming a little bit mysterious 
and withdrawn into your own world. This can be a time where you are having more fun alone, where you are expressing yourself more within the comfort of your own home. This also can be a time, though, where there is disturbance in the mind. You can be very restless. You can feel that you want to change locations or move at this time. But with Rahu in that fourth house, it is a time to get things settled within your mind and within your home. It is not a time of making sudden decisions. Remember that Rahu is illusion. And so there can be ups and down scenarios, difficulties around changing location at this time. But Rahu in this fourth house can give you a lot of strange and unusual experiences. Again, there can be a lot of strange things happening within your home environment. You can have supernatural experiences, all sorts of experiences where you have to re-innovate within your home, where you have to make repairs, make some changes within your environment. This is definitely a time to engage yourself into any kind of relaxation techniques, meditation, any kind of spiritual pursuits that you're into, this can help you in calming the mind and finding some peace. This also can make you very much detached from your career at this time because K2 will be on the opposite end transiting through your 10th house. So some of you are experiencing some burnout at this time where the last transit of K2 has put a lot of energy on you to push forward to put more energy, more effort, more persistence. And this can be a time where you are experiencing a little bit of a drain in your energy levels or your focus. There can be a tendency to become dissatisfied in your career. You may be wanting to change your career direction. And actually, because you are a dual sign, this can be a positive thing where some of you are going to start to make some changes in your career path and coming up with some new ideas, some new solutions to how to improve your career. So whether you are changing career or staying in your career, this is a huge time for changes to occur. <laughs>